Hello, everyone. My name is Sabrina Young, and I'm with Young's Daughters Funeral Home and Bereavement Center. Today, I'm so excited to share um, a friend of mine. Her name is Tammy Robinson, and she is with William R. Courtney, the administrator, and she is going to give us some helpful tips on what um, the Veterans Home has as resources, as well as who qualifies and what services. So we're gonna go ahead and open up with Tammy. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a veteran myself. So having this video is so important for my comrades. I know when they reach out to me as a service officer. So I wanna know a little bit about the history of the veterans home. Who owns it? Who manages it? Can you tell us more about the home itself? Yes. Okay. So William R. Courtney, Texas State Veterans Home here in Temple, it is owned by the state of Texas and it's regulated by the Texas Health and Human Services Commission, as well as the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, our home is conveniently located right here behind the Central Texas VA Hospital in Temple on the same campus, um, but it is operated by a third party and they manage the day-to-day -day operations of the veterans homes. Um, the one here in Temple at William R. Courtney, it is managed by Touchstone Communities. Now the Texas Veterans Land Board oversees the operators and, and we are so, um, we are blessed, blessed with the um, presence of an on-site representative here in the veterans home to help us. Um, and the elected commissioner over the veterans land board is Dr. Dawn Buckingham. Wonderful. And you can see her presentations much through your Facebook page. And so we're a big advocate for her. So what actually qualifies a veteran to live at the home? I, that, I get that question quite frequently. Yes. What does it look for? Well, first of all, they need to have a skilled nursing, uh, medical necessity for skilled nursing, and they must reside in the state for at least one day. Um, but as far as being a veteran, they must have served at least 90 days and be honorably discharged. Wonderful. Now, what if it's general? Does that make a difference if it's general, still honorable? Uh, yes, yes. As long as, okay. yes, not dishonorable. Okay, so you can still be a general with an honorable discharge and you can still be honorable, wonderful. And what services are included? So, you know, we, we heard about the medical necessity, but what services are included in the, when, you, when you live there? Well, William R. Courtney is a 160 bed um, long-term care facility and 32 of those beds are designated on a memory care unit that we provide um, for veterans with dementia and Alzheimer's. But our daily nursing care includes help with activities of daily living. We have meals, laundry, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Um, we also provide um, a wide range of activities and social events that include things like pet therapy, music therapy. We have a PTS support group, um, just a wide range of things veteran centered. Wonderful. That makes my heart super happy to hear that you have that many resources and that much um, support to the veteran. So let's get into the nitty gritty part of it. What about cost advantages and, and things of that nature? What, what, what should they expect? Well, there are a lot of advantages um, for a veteran to live here. Um, cost being one, if the veterans are 70% or higher service connected disabled, um, they can generally live here for free. Um, if they do not meet that threshold, there is a VA per diem that can help alleviate costs still. Um, but aside from the cost advantages, there's other advantages, of course, like I said, with the veteran-centered care and basically living and, and having the camaraderie of living with fellow veterans who share your similar life experience. Yes, I bet that is a quite, I mean, just gathering at the local VFWs or American Legion, but then lifelong retirement with them. I mean, what a, what a tribute, um, and it could possibly be a lot of fun, actually, yes. to have that. Um, so tell me a little bit about the veteran. They're going to bring you a DD-214. Tell us a little about the application process and what's going to be required if they're seeking. Well, yes, the DD-214 is required, um, but there is an application that must be completed and that can be um, obtained here um, from our admissions department, or you can simply go online to www.vlb.texas.gov and the VL, it's on the VLB website and um, just fill out that application and get it to us. We'll take it from there. 
Wow. So again, streamlining, easy camaraderie. I mean, you guys with all the resources, I can truly say that I'm really excited um, to have you guys as a resource now for my veterans. Knowing a little bit more goes a long way. So Tammy, I want to thank you so much. And if they wanted to call your office, uh, what number should they be reaching out to you for? Yes, 254-791-8280. Great, 8280. All right, well, followers, please, if you have any questions for Tammy, go ahead and leave it down in the comments box. We'll be monitoring it and sending it to her. Um, if you have any other service officer needs, please reach out to me at the office. Um, like, subscribe, share. This might be helpful for a family that's seeking um, William R. Courtney's placement. So everyone, thank you so much for watching and we look forward to the next in interviews. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Thank <laughs> you.